on this episode of Motoring Box, we're going to be dragging my XR6 Turbo into the 21st century. These are from the 21st century, wait! This episode of Motoring Box is proudly supported by Haltech. Unlock the power. Welcome back to Motoring Box, I'm Sean McKellar, this is my 2004 BA Falcon Mark II XR6 Turbo. And today we're doing something rather special and is arguably a little bit overkill as well. We're going to be upgrading the stock standard ECU on this car with a Haltech Pro plug-in ECU. Now, if I'm honest, this is overkill for this build and what I'm hoping to achieve because I'm not chasing crazy amounts of power in this thing. If I could get around the 300 rearville kilowatt mark, I would be a happy man. And you don't need to do what I'm doing here to achieve that figure. You could simply get the stock standard ECU flashed, get it tuned that way and you would be a happy man. But I am a little bit of a nerd at heart. I love computers, I love tinkering. And the prospect of dropping in a Haltech standalone ECU into this vehicle really fascinates me. And it's just something I really wanted to include in this build. So I've actually got it right here in my hot little hands and we will do a little unboxing video on this to show you guys what's actually included in the pack. But really this product uh, was released a couple of years back and it's really suited for people who are looking to screw really huge horsepower figures out of their Barra turbo engines. And people chasing those really sky high figures do start to run into limitations when you're flashing the stock standard ECU. So that's really the market they're going for. The advantages of having a proper standalone, powerful, modern, live tunable ECU when you're in that power range really starts to become an advantage. So yeah, if you had your sensible hat on, you could say you probably shouldn't have gone for one of these. You could have spent the money on a couple of other items instead because these things, they retail for just over 3000 Australian dollars, but they are a really kick-ass piece of technology designed and built here in Australia. So it is incredible that something like that has been designed and built here because it's not really happening with a lot of products anymore, especially of this caliber. So we can talk a little bit more about it as we go, but for now, let's get this thing opened and have a look at what's inside. The stock standard Barra ECU is held in by three tamper-proof bolts and if you need a guide on how to remove these, I'll include a link in the top corner to an awesome video published by Haltech. But my car's been messed with before so it makes removal of the ECU a hell of a lot easier. And once it has been unbolted, you simply need to lift up the ECU and unclip the three loom connectors on the underside of the unit. Before you can install your brand new Haltech Elite Pro plug-in, you need to firstly install the USB connection cable. This simply pushes in and then you turn the locking ring clockwise to lock it into place. And then you can clip in the loom connectors exactly the same as you did before. You can now drop the ECU down onto the mounting bracket and reinstall it with the three bolts provided. I've decided I'm probably going to come back at a later date and swap these out for tamper-proof items for that extra layer of security. Once the ECU has been installed, we need to locate the USB connector and mount it using the bracket provided. I've decided to utilize a nearby bolt and then mount it pointing in the direction of the cabin. And that's it, your brand new Haltech Elite Pro plugin is now installed. All 
Right, so we've got the Haltech ECU installed, but that is just half of the story because now we need to connect using our laptop and start the pre-configuration process. Now with an ECU like this, you absolutely have to get the car tuned, but handily, Haltech has some base maps set up. Now, as far as I'm aware, this ECU only supports Barra powered Falcons from BA to FGX, but only with the six speed automatic or the six speed manual. As far as I'm aware, the four speed BTR automatic is not supported. So bad luck for any of you guys out there. It's probably down to demand, I guess. Like this ECU is mainly aimed at people chasing really high horsepower figures and probably not a lot of those are going to be running that gearbox. But um, I'll let Haltech jump in the comments section and correct me if that is not the case. But uh, yeah, do bear that in mind. Six speed ZF Auto or the six speed T56 manual, which is what this car is here. Okay, so we've got our laptop here powered up. I've got my screen recording so you can see what we're doing and we're going to launch the Haltech ESP software. 2.51.1. I've actually installed this software from the USB prior and um, the version on that USB was an outdated version because the ECU was supplied to me quite a few months ago. Um, but it's really easy to update the app. It'll prompt you as well if there's a newer version available. So this thing is still displaying as being an FG Mark II. So I believe we have to try and load a map into this thing. So if we go to upload a map, there are some base maps, so there's one for Ford, Falcon, and we've got a Turbo Manual BA uh, 2.41, which is what we want. So let's import that. The map will be upgraded. Let's upgrade that map. So here we go. Curiously enough, I don't remember seeing that information on Haltech's video on their YouTube channel. So um, I believe this is the way you need to go about it, because if you go into settings when it's on an FG and it's installed on a BA, then there's a whole lot of sensor settings which are incorrect, so I definitely think loading or uploading that base map into the Haltech ECU first is probably what you want to be doing. The ECU must now be rebooted. Alright, so I'll turn the ignition off. Connection lost. Back on again. Heard the fuel pump prime that time, which is nice. And we can now enter the main setup, so just confirming we've got a BA six cylinder turbo manual. We've got a manual transmission and we just need to check anything which is glowing red or has a, uh, a warning symbol on it. Drive by wire and also engine on off control. So I believe that's to do with if you've got a starter button because it's saying start button has been left unchecked so we don't have that. And drive by wire, I think we just need to calibrate the pedal. So we make sure the pedal is not depressed. I'll make sure it's right at the top and we'll hit calibrate. Now we need to fully depress the pedal. So make sure it's all the way down, as hard as you can go. Hit calibrate. So the throttle pedal is now calibrated, but we just need to do the throttle position sensor. So if we hit calibrate, I can actually hear the throttle opening and closing. So it's probably just cycling the uh, throttle open and closed a couple of times and then getting a reading off the sensor. It sounds like it's doing some partial throttle openings as well. You won't be able to hear that on the video, but you'll just have to trust me. And now it's in the verify mode, so I can hear it clicking open and shut. Cool, so that is calibrated. So really, that should be all we need to do. Some settings remain in error. So we just have a couple of settings here as well to do with the gear ratio and um, what have we got here? Transmission torque reduction and transmission torque limit. Let's see if I can clear these. And gear can input. Does it matter? I'll just make a note of that and let my tuner know later that uh, I have cleared those settings. And now the ECU needs to be disconnected and rebooted. Ignition off, ignition on. So I have noticed the pump primes for a little bit longer compared to the stock standard ECU. And before I try and start this car, there is one more thing I want to check out and that is the fuel injectors. So the thing I've noticed with this car, if you've been following this channel, you'll know that it had a Redcliffe Dyno piggyback ECU. I've got a video which I'll throw up here in the corner. But what I've noticed is ever since I've ripped that system out and the stock standard ECU was trying to run this engine, it was running incredibly rich. 
there was a lot of black smoke coming out the exhaust and you could just smell unburned fuel in the air and it'd go through your hair, it'd go through your clothes. It was a really strong smell. So from that I had a theory that perhaps the injectors have been uncapped because they look like they are the stock standard injectors. But I actually found an old article written about Redcliffe Dino and what they were doing with these cars back in the day. And in that article they actually state that they love to high flow these stock standard injectors, which I believe they mean simply uncapping them. And from memory I believe they mentioned that the injectors were then sort of rated as being 435cc. So if that's true and these stock standard injectors are 288, I probably need to go in here and change it to, I'll probably go for say 420. And we'll just have to see if the car likes it or not. So yeah, I guess all we have to do now is try and start this thing. She doesn't start. <laughs> okay, what do we got here? Well, she's running. Pretty smoothly too. Can't see any smoke coming out the back, so I think my theory with the injectors is probably correct. She is missing a little bit. So yeah, I'm just going to turn that off so I don't get gassed out here in the car, but it looks as though we've got everything up and running and I'm just going to have to probably do some fine tuning to make sure the car is nice and drivable, probably in relation to the injector flow rate. Um, it does still smell very fuely here, so perhaps I might have to up that a little bit further um, just to figure out what's going on. And I will check the error codes as well to see what else it picks up. But um, yeah, look, we just need to get the car drivable. so. When the time comes and we can get this car tuned, I can actually do the drive um, and get it there in one piece. So yeah, there is some issues we'll need to iron out as well, uh, which hopefully I can either research myself or the tuner can actually help with. Um, so yeah, I'm not really sure who's actually going to tune this car yet. If you're in the Brisbane area, I do have a couple of people in mind, but I really want to find someone who wants to be involved with the channel and doesn't mind being on camera and uh, would really love to be part of this process. So yeah, do give me an email. I'll put my email down the bottom here. So yeah, that's about it really. Um, there is going to be more to come. I am going to do a few extra things to this car before we get it tuned. So that won't be happening next week. We're going to do a few more things. Um, hopefully get this car, just a few of those little bugs ironed out um, and then we can go and get it tuned. So yeah, let's jump out and we'll finish this thing up. All right guys, so we've got the car up and running, which is really exciting. Probably not going to drive the best just because it is a base map and I did check with Haltech. A base map is literally just that. It's enough to get the car up and running, get it driving, get it to your tuner. What it isn't is a recreation of this car's stock standard tune. So don't expect that you can plug one of these things in, load a base map and then it's going to behave exactly like the car would if it's stock standard because it is not. It's literally enough to get the car running, get you to a tuner. And another thing that really excites me about running an aftermarket ECU like this is that you can do some additional upgrades to your engine prior to getting it tuned and still have it run. So for example, if you wanted to drop a larger set of fuel injectors into the fuel rail, you can actually do that and simply enter the information into the Haltech ESP software and the engine will still run on that base map. And likewise, if you've got a wideband O2 sensor, you can actually install that, update the settings and the car again will still run. So yeah, there are some things that you otherwise would have had to have left out and driven the car to the tuner, got those things installed, and then got the car tuned because if you, for example, threw larger fuel injectors in on the stock standard ECU, it's gonna be way over fueled and the car won't run, or if it does, it'll run like shit. So that is a really cool feature. And it just means we can sort of keep tinkering with this for a while longer and um, get the car ready and in a position where we can go take it and get it tuned. Um, try and iron out as many of the issues that it has before we do so, so we're not wasting our time at the mechanic and on the dyno. So yes, uh, I'm quite excited about running this Haltech Pro Plug-in ECU for the Barrett Turbo. 
So if you want more information about this ECU, do hit up Haltech's website, they are not cheap. But I will actually publish a second video where I talk a little bit more about why I decided to go for this ECU as opposed to a PCM Tech flash tune of the stock standard ECU. So if you want to have a look at that, do check out the channel. I'll put a link up here in the corner when the video is published. Otherwise, yes, I'm extremely excited about what the future holds for this car. It was released in the 21st century, but we have really brought it bang up to date, which is quite exciting. So yeah, really hope you enjoyed the video. Please consider subscribing. If you like the video, hit like as well. It helps out a ton. I don't get many views and I would really love to have some more people along for the ride. If you want to support the channel further, I do have a Patreon or there's also a membership option here on YouTube as well. Hit the join button below and hopefully see you next time. Oh yeah. Oh yeah.